Hello everybody, my name is Caitlin Wood, and for my database of the week, I chose to focus on the Gale Literature Resource Center. Um, I'm really excited to show everyone all the cool features um, that this database offers because I first learned about its existence when I was an undergraduate student. Um, I majored in English and American Literature, so as you can imagine, I've always been a really big um, book lover, book nerd, if you will. I'll, I'll own that title. <laughs> and so I'd love to just introduce it to you and show you some of the, the things that it offers. So let's dive right into this. So for a second, we're going to head over to the Gale About page. And as you can see, um, we've talked about Gale a little bit in the class so far, but um, like many of the other um, publishing companies, Gale is fairly large. It owns quite a few databases, and the Literature Resource Center isn't really any different. It's actually three um, databases into one. Um, the three databases are Contemporary Authors, Dictionary of Literacy Biography, and the Contemporary Literary Criticism. So it's, it's three in one there. First, talk about the target audience, or the audiences in this case. Um, the Literature Research Center is clearly targeted at people and academics. Um, the, the format, as you can kind of tell, especially the basic search, which is what this page shows, is formatted in a very um, easy-to-use, clear, uh, appealing way. And um, this, this particular format, the basic search, um, it seems to be targeted at high school students or um, people around that age, but obviously university students and college students can still benefit from it as well. Um, as for example, let's say we did a, a search, basic search. I could type in Jane Austen. As you can see, they have autofill, um, so it gives you um, help trying to, to figure out what you're trying to solve. So for someone who is um, an inexperienced searcher, having these extra choices could be very um, useful to make it easier to sell. But let's just say I didn't want to use that. I was going to type in Jane Austen, uh, keep it simple. I could submit that. The other thing I like about the setup of um, basic search is that once um, a search term has been entered, they have these nice uh, headings here where it says liter literature criticism, biographies, topic and work overviews, reviews and news, primary sources and literary works, and multimedia. So basically it's breaking down all different types um, and forms of resources that are available um, in the results page, which is great. You can obviously also sort by um, different uh, traits, so relevism, relev relevance, excuse me, newest, oldest, and document title, and you also have the ability to filter your um, results as well. Let's go back for a minute um, to the basic search. And so other nice features they have in basic search, as you can see, what makes this a little different from your uh, more generalized um, database uh, is that it's clearly targeted towards people who are looking for books or literary text. Because you can see they have a person search here. So let's go to the person search. You can see what I mean. Because um, you know the name of the person looking for, enter it here. So what's great about this is, again, because it's tailored towards people who are looking for authors or um, specific text, you know, if you know the person, the author you're looking for, you can search for here. I especially love this part right here, the literary movement, which is for, a, again, a book lover like me, this kind of um, resource with its focus on authors and text um, is awesome. You also can, uh, let's go to advanced search now. So advanced search um, looks pretty similar to what we've seen so far for advanced search, but there are a few um, differences for instance, there's a bigger focus on um, the name of the work or the um, person. Again, makes sense given that it's for literature, um, but it still has your options to put in Boolean operators. Um, you can still filter by peer-reviewed journals. Um, I did like this at the end, the by target audience. I saw that and I was looking through. I think that's really interesting that it offers that. I haven't really seen that in other databases. So as you can see, for instance, it allows you to um, search uh, for certain audience groups. Um, for instance, let's say I was looking for a children's book. You know, I could um, tag this one here and um, only things that are targeted at this particular group of people, this, this demographic, would come up, which is super cool. All right, let's move now on to the next part, which I want to show you some really uh, cool features that, again, are not exactly... Um, unique, but I don't see them in a lot of different places. So first of all, I really love um, that they have the highlights and notes feature here. 
So one of the common complaints that I hear a lot, uh, I know I've, I've said it before too, for reading an article online is that it's really hard to take notes like you would if you had printed it out and highlighted it. Um, what's awesome about this resource is it actually lets you do that. Um, so let's say, let's go back to, let's go to advanced search for a minute. We're going to, let's see, we're going to type in our thing here. So we have Jane Austen's our person. And for our name of the work, we're going to do Pride and Prejudice. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're going to search. So I got some great articles here right away. Now, let's say I wanted to click on this one here. I've chosen an article, and there was a particular line that really stuck out to me. As you can see, I've already, already uh, practiced on this, but let's say um, this sentence right here in the article really jumped out at me. So if I could highlight it, this whole paragraph, and if I wanted to, it allows me to highlight it, choose a color, and I can even make a note on it. So we'll say, you know, nice paragraph. And what's great is the article will remember it for me. So now if I go back to highlights and notes, as you can see, it saved it for me. So as again, as someone who might be keeping track of certain articles for a paper I'm writing or just to um, keep up in a class that has a lot of books, this is a great fe feature. So let's go back to the article real quick. I want to show you two more um, features. So um, for from an accessibility standpoint, I also really love uh, these three things right here. So one, if I want to listen to the article out loud, I can do that. Sometimes it takes a minute to warm up, so we'll give it a second. But you also can decrease the font size or increase it, which again, for people who have um, eyesight issues or other um, problems, uh, this can be very helpful. Ruptures and rationality. There it goes. 50 years of it. reading pride and prejudice. It's very helpful. And there's also the translate um, feature, which um, has a bunch of different languages that you can um, change it to. I also really love the listen feature because it reminds me of um, Christy Farah's point. I know she was talking about children's databases, but I still think it's interesting um, and how um, those can help children learn how to read. But I still think this feature is good for a variety of reasons for older patrons or users as well. All right, last but certainly not least, let's go back to the home page. I want to very briefly go over three of my favorite extra features. So as you can see on the home page, they have um, this thing called Featured Author and Featured Work. I realized after spending some time on this that these two things actually change every hour, which I think is awesome because it's one of those things that reminds me of um, the point made earlier in the semester about um, serendipitous discoveries. You know, if a person is using this database for an extended period of time, they're going to see this home page more than once. They're going to um, learn about maybe a couple of authors and a couple of works that they hadn't heard of before, or they can learn more about it. So I, I love that feature right there. Finally, I want to show you um, Topic Finder right here. Um, it's a super cool feature um, where if I type in a certain word or phrase, so let's go Jane Austen again since I love her a lot. What's really cool is it will take, give it a second to load, it will take, uh, as it says, the title, subjects, and approximately the first 100 words from a subset of your top results and feed them into an algorithm. So it creates this really cool um, image here. And last, but certainly not least, we have the term frequency, um, which, again, if you type a term in, It will show you all of the dates that this term popped up in all of these different um, types of uh, articles in different formats. My only concern, I don't know much about the term frequency. I have to do some research on it. Um, but I, I have uh, the talk this week about Google Trends in my mind from the Voices of Search video, um, Amy, this week. So I'm curious to know whether the term fre frequency is decided in a similar way to that or if they actually go through and whole term. So I'll be um, interested to know about that. All right. Thank you again for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot about the Gale Literature Resource Center, and I encourage you to check it out sometime. Thank you.